Let's try out the new phone. I don't usually shoot on a phone, but we're going to try this out today. Uh, picked this up this morning at the ham radio swap meet. These these are really cool. This is old military uh, multimeter. Uh, very, very, very cool. Got talked into buying it. Um, anyways, uh, it's in perfect shape. Really, it's, I imagine it works. I don't know for sure. It did come with leads. Um, it did come with the jumpers um, for setting up the uh, setting up the scale. Uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. So it takes uh, I think one D battery, and uh, you used to have those four and a half volt packs, and it will probably come up with something else to get the thirteen and a half volts that it requires. Um, so let me see what we can come up with uh, battery wise. I almost forgot too as I was pondering batteries for this. I did pick up a little bit newer style Simpson 260. Um, these are just kind of handy and you know you can get get them pretty cheap at the uh, places like the ham swap meet and electronic ham tests stuff like that. Um, I picked this up off of somebody who had no idea what they had. They just Sometimes these guys show up there and they you know, they buy out warehouses or estates or whatever. Um, anyways, um, let's take a look and see if they left the batteries. Because these, I think, if, if I recall, these take two batteries. It takes like a 9 volt and like a C cell or something like that. And if they left batteries in it, which probably, who knows what the inside of it looks like. It's always a gamble buying one of these. And yeah, it's got batteries in it. What do we have? It's a nine volt. Nine volt uh, Duraleak. And the D cell, it takes a D cell. This is a never ready a D cell. And I'm making a mess of this, taking it out, but at least the never ready didn't leak. And the fuse is blown. That's no surprise. It's usually from somebody hooking up to it that has no idea what they're doing. Okay, so nothing irreparable. This is an old battery, I'll tell you that. Boy, this phone, it doesn't focus, does it? Maybe I need to go like this. Let's see. I'm figuring out how to use my new phone. Live on TV. Yeah, it doesn't let you change the lens while you're recording. That's interesting. Let's uh, change the lens. There. That's interesting. So yeah, you, you have, it uses three different lenses. And anyways, um, the Dura, Dura leak, it leaked as usual. Yeah, nice. Yeah, real nice. All right. Well, we'll clean it up and we'll throw a new battery in it. This I'm sure will work. Um, these things always work. I don't know. I've ever seen one that doesn't. Um, I like these. They, they work good as good ammeters if you need them and they're analog, you know. So this is one of the newer ones though like i said i've got an older one right over here this is the older style simpson 260 i've had that for a long time so uh we'll see if we get that one working but i want to uh, figure out this is 13 and a half volts and um try to figure out the best combo of batteries to get there okay so i've settled on uh i'm just going to use triple a's or excuse me double a's for this um those little three uh triple battery holders for double A's. Three of those will fit in here just fine. We'll just put some alkalines in it. Um, and I was kind of curious because I just don't know a whole lot about these if uh, just a single D cell battery would suffice for using the uh, ohm meter. And I believe that it will. And yep, it does work. I expected that it would. So that's on the one ohm scale. So obviously there's a little bit of resistance in the leads. Um, Turn it up to a thousand ohms. I bet if I touch it with my hands, yeah. So it's it, it's sensitive as I would expect that it would be. These are really high quality meters. I mean, this thing's meant to be tossed. You know, it's military grade. You can't get any better than that. Um, looks like it was repaired. O two ninety four. So is that February of ninety four? Anyways, this is a cool little unit. Well, it's not really little, but. Um, it's rugged. These things will take a beating. So 
that's that meter. Um, I'm going to test out, uh, I'm not sure what the 13.5, I'm going to use 12 volts on it here and see. I'm not sure why it would need 13.5 volts. I guess that's, maybe that's for the voltmeter side, but I'm not sure. I don't, I just don't know enough about these. It'd be interesting to get a manual for it to understand it a little bit better. So, you know, here's one of my problems is I suffer from CRS and I don't remember if I mentioned this before or not, but the manual's actually in here, if you can believe that. I mean, what a complete unit. I don't think it's got a lot of use on it for how old it is. Um, but uh, anyways, it does say it needs that 13 and a half volt, but I haven't found anything on it that doesn't work uh, without it yet. But I haven't played with every, I haven't done current measurements, although I think that wouldn't need anything. Um, but uh, it seems the, the ohm meter at least seems to work. I haven't measured AC volts with it yet, so who, who knows? Anyways, I did get the, uh, it's got some cheap battery holders. You know, I think this is just the easiest way to do this is put these in there and just use, you know, alkalines. So uh, we'll just, uh, we're just going to series these up to get our uh, 13 and a half and I'll just tie it in to the screw terminals in the back of this thing. All right, so here's what we got. Uh, I just put these guys in series. That's how you uh, add up your voltage, obviously, if you didn't know that. Um, I might even get a little fancy. I might put like a little hot glue in here or something to hold these down, but it's not really necessary. They'll be held in there just fine. What I ended up doing is I just desoldered the original leads and I'll probably just throw them inside so I keep them. But uh, I just stole the heat shrink tubing that shows, you know, 13 and a half minus and plus, And uh, I just soldered it onto the uh, terminals there. And uh, that'll work out just fine. So we'll go ahead and we'll, I've got some Dura leaks here. That's, that's what I got. And uh, we'll put those in there so it can ruin it. And uh, we should have a fully functioning meter. Okay, and uh, we'll just check the voltage now. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's probably gonna be a little bit high because uh, alkalines are a little high when they're new. 14.4, so yeah, we're about a volt high. That's fine, no, that won't hurt anything. Um, great, perfect, and uh, of course the uh, with a polarity is correct, that, that's important, but I knew that that wasn't going to be a problem because it's pretty obvious. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and seal this up now. This thing should be ready to go. Now, if you're not going to use these for an extended period of time, take the batteries out of them because it'll just ruin this thing if you leave them in here, um, especially these Duracells. You know, I just I buy them because it's what Costco has, but um, and if you use them, they're fine, but if you let them sit, they will leak. So uh, that should go ahead and wrap that up. And just the last thing, I'm just familiarizing myself with this. So um, this is where you would measure ohms right here. Um, DC current, 10 amp scale, 20,000 ohms per volt DC, 1,000 ohms per volt AC and DC measurement. Um, you would measure AC volts there, ohms there, DC current, 1,000 ohms per volt, volts DC. Oh, excuse me, over here. If you're measuring volts DC, 1,000 ohms per volt, negative, and you'd select your scale there. Um, direct, 20,000 ohms per volt DC. So that would be this side. And then you can reverse the polarity here. So that'll, you know, that'll reverse the... DC polarity and then of course you have your uh, 1 ohm scale for ohms measurement 10, 100, 1000, 10,000 and it's very sensitive too I can um, this analog meter unlike a Simpson you can you can grab onto this with your fingers and it'll uh, it'll measure the resistance of your body of course your current scale down here two and a half or 10 amp depending on if you're which you're selected in there that's how that works 500 milliamps, 150, 10, 2.5, and 250 microamps, which is pretty cool. So this thing's really neat. It's super well built. The manual, I was just looking at it. It says 1976 on it. Department of the Army, November of 76. This thing is like super awesome. So anyways, that's just a look at uh, an old school meter, you know. A little pocket meter will do everything that this can for the most part, I think. But, um, you know, I mean... Not necessarily, you know, the analog scale is still really, 
analog meters are really nice. So I just thought this would be cool to have. Picked it up at the ham swap meet and, you know, didn't pay much for it. So anyways, that's just a look at it.